Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jamie, your crafty DIY guy, and I'm back. I have got three really cool projects for you today. Now, before we jump into that video, if you are one of my OG subscribers, thank you guys so much. Seriously, I love it. I'm having such a blast with you guys, and uh, I think of you all as friends, so thank you again for being here. If you're one of my newer subscribers, thank you also for coming to the channel. Whether you came through Megan at Glue Guns and Roses, or whether you came through The Crafty Couple, or maybe you just stumbled upon me, or one of the other many YouTubers out there that might have shared the channel. Uh, thank you, seriously. I know that there's a lot of us out there and we're all trying to bring you a lot of really cool content and a lot of cool projects. So hopefully you are enjoying everything that you're seeing here. Now, if you are fans of Anthropology, Pier One, any of those kind of high-end stores, then you're gonna like this video a lot. I am super, super stoked. Um, the first two projects uh, are Anthropology. One is a Anthropology-inspired project. The other one is like pretty much straight up copy. <laughs> the Pier 1 is also kind of a, a dupe or a copy. So check them out. Give me your feedback. Let me know what you think. And uh, hopefully you enjoy them. All right, guys. Here you go. Oh, wait. I got to do this. Oh, I did it right. All right, everybody. My first dupe is from Anthropology. I saw this plant stand and was pretty obsessed and wanted to make my own version. So I took my Dollar Tree tomato cage and also a plastic bucket. This was actually left over from an Easter haul and decided to uh, make a plant stand with them. So the first thing I did was trim off these edges. You'll notice on your tomato cage that there's one side that is uh, kind of rounded and it almost looks like feet. And then there's another end that is squared off. So you're gonna actually cut the squared off ends of your um, tips off here. And then what you're gonna just simply start to do is remove the um, kind of wire circles that are on there. And then once you've done that, go ahead and start to flatten out that end that you clipped off with your wire cutters. And I flattened it about, I would say about two inches, maybe an inch and a half. And um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna slightly bend this at a curve, but you want to be very, very careful with this because these will snap. They are very thin metal and you uh, you know, you know, don't wanna mess up one of your legs. And then when you get done, they all should be about like this. So they should kind of be a um, you know, similar angle, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then the next thing you're gonna do is, you can see where I used a red Sharpie and just kind of marked the bucket spot. And uh, all I'm doing is taking my, Yes, my janky tube of E6000 is just making a return appearance. And uh, I'm putting some glue on there. That way I can kind of uh, make sure, one, that this is going to stay because this is going to go out on my front porch. And regular glue gun uh, glue will actually melt in the heat. So we don't want that with summer coming. So um, again, I added some hot glue to that because it does help speed up that process of that E6000 drying. And then I literally just kind of lined it up with that little mark that I made and pushed it up against the side of the bucket, holding it until it was pretty firm in place, really about until I would say that that hot glue started to dry. And then I grabbed that piece of duct tape that you can see kind of hanging there from the top of the bucket and used that to help kind of hold everything in place that way it could dry and set up overnight. I wanted to make sure that this was good and solid. So I just put that tape up above where all that glue was. Um, that way the tape wouldn't glue to the bucket. <laughs> and then um, just set it aside. And, you know, you can see I kind of repeated it on the three sides of the bucket. Then the next part was to... Um, Go ahead and put some decorative trim along the bottom of the bucket. This is going to also help reinforce those legs and keep those legs sturdy. So I took some nautical rope. I unfortunately just have some scraps. So I had one piece of regular nautical rope and it was enough to go completely around the bucket. So I went ahead and I did that first. And then I decided that I would use some of my nautical rope scraps or some of my pieces. So I've got these pieces, you know how when you separate a piece of nautical rope and it kind of gives you three little medium sized ropes, that's what I have here. And then again, um, I can go around the bucket about three or four times, I would say. And then the last thing I thought that I might do just to add a little bit of uh, you know, a different kind of look to it is I actually have some Dollar Tree twine. So I thought between the thicker nautical rope and then this rope 
and then also the twine, that that would give it a nice look once everything was wrapped. And so this is kind of what it looks like. Um, I am going to be spray painting over this. I would recommend that you burn your threads off of your rope uh, before you spray paint. I didn't do that, and so it, it looks a little wonky. And then go ahead and chop these things off with your clippers. Um, I just used my pink shears from Dollar Tree. Now, once you've got the glue uh, rope already done, you can go ahead and remove your duct tape and get this ready for painting because um, between the E6000 and hot glue, and now the rope and the twine that's all been glued on top of this, this is going to be pretty sturdy. The next thing that I did is kind of stand it up to make sure it was balanced, and you can kind of see how it's going to look. Um, I think it's really cute already, and of course, she needs a paint job, so we're gonna take her outside, you know, give her a little Botox, give her a little freshening up, and it'll look great when it's done. So I took it outside, I spray painted it bright orange, because I wanted it to go really well with my front porch and everything that's out on my front porch now. Um, she took a lot of work. Let me tell you, this was probably about four coats of orange paint. That uh, plastic bucket pattern was showing through really, really easy. And that was on the outside and the inside of this bucket. So um, I just kind of took my time with it. I let it dry all day long. It was a beautiful sunny day, so I didn't have to worry about weather. And uh, I literally just put a nice coat on, sprayed the legs, worked my way around the bucket, and then when that dried, I would flip it over, do the inside, etc. All right, so this is what it looks like. How adorable is this? It goes perfectly with my rug that you can see there in the background. It holds my plant really nicely. Um, this is uh, just a plastic pot inside of here. And again, I am so happy with this little plant stand. The next time I can do go to a Dollar Tree, I'm gonna grab more of these tomato cages and make so many more of these. All right, guys, the next dupe is this Saturn bull that I fell in love with for $80 at Anthropology. And of course, there was no way I was going to pay $80 for it. So I decided to make my own. I grabbed a garden bowl from Dollar Tree that I had in my stash. And then these are the tomato cage rings that were left over from the previous project. So I am going to use these guys to make my Saturn bowl from Anthropology, And I think I can do it pretty easily. So the next thing I did was uh, take my glue gun and just drill or burn the holes in the side of the bowl. I did three holes going down and then three holes on the opposite side. So hopefully that makes sense. When you see me put the rods in, you'll understand. And then uh, this was just starting to put the rods in. I um, put them in and then also glued them in on both sides of the bowl. It looks a little thick and goopy, but it's okay because once you paint them, it actually looks really good and it looks like welded metal, depending of course on what kind of paint that you're using. Um, but again, uh, it was pretty easy to do and uh, wasn't, wasn't a bad time at all. So again, just kind of burning those holes in there and then going back through and touching it up with the glue and uh, making sure each level was set before you moved on. And then this is what it looks like before it's been painted. Again, I think this is a pretty good copy. So I went ahead and wanted to put feet on mine. I didn't have the patience for the uh, kind of longer stick legs that that one had, so I just glued these wood beads on the bottom. And then I took it outside and spray painted it with some bronze hammered paint and I love this. I really, really love this. I saved myself 80 bucks, and this was basically like $2 to make, minus, of course, the succulents and the rocks that are already in there. All right, guys, and then the very last project is from Pier 1. I saw this gold mirror and loved it. I took a uh, wire ring that I had left over from an old project. This is also from a tomato cage, and um, I just... Um, kind of figured out that I could string some of these gorgeous beads on it. Um, I had a Dollar Tree mirror and I had the paper plate, which added a kind of a cool texture. These uh, metallic beads are from Dollar Tree as well. And they're something that I saw at Crafter Square right before COVID-19, so I grabbed some. Uh, the first thing I did was take my paper plate and just kind of flatten it out a little bit more. Um, the center mirror is not a perfect fit within here, so kind of flattening out the plate a little bit helped it. And then I took my mirror, and this is kind of where you'll see like a, a big bonehead move here. Um, I glued the mirror 
and everything down to the paper plate and uh, then kind of was like, oh yeah, I probably need to be able to remove that mirror because I have to paint all of this. So <laughs> that was a little bit of an oopsie on my end. Um, I ended up grabbing more glue and and then I figured it out. So I just took the frame off and then just kind of carefully removed this mirror from here. Um, it's not horrible to remove this. So luckily that came off without breaking. And then I took everything outside to spray paint it. Um, and I purposely did not glue the frame down because then I would have to pry it off when I had to put the mirror back in there. <laughs> um, while I... While the paint was drying, I went ahead and strung the silver beads. I didn't have enough glue or enough, I'm sorry, enough gold paint to be able to do this. So I decided to just go with this silver metallic instead. So my version of this mirror is going to be silver. And uh, I just strung these beads on this wire and it was really easy to do. I bent the end of one of the wires, that way the beads would stay on there. And then um, you'll see kind of as I was working my way towards the end of this, I just put a dab of hot glue on the end of that just to hold all of those beads on there. And now you can kind of see how it's going to almost go around the frame mirror. Now that center uh, piece of that, uh, that wire that's holding that frame together and that did hold that wire together. I ended up cutting that off. And uh, here I just put a little bit more glue because I was afraid that these things were going to fly off and go across the room. And uh, then I figured out that I could just cut the tip of that wire off where that uh, clamp is and it would be totally fine. Now this is what everything looks like after it's been spray painted. I love this silver metallic spray spray paint. This is actually from Ace Hardware and uh, it's again a pretty cool paint and I use it in a lot of stuff. So this is the one that I grabbed and um, it's super cool. So now it was time to go ahead and just glue my mirror back to the cardboard frame that I had hot glued down before. So I tried to make sure that this was pretty centered and um, You'll see it's it's a little off-centered, but I made it work. So uh, again, I put a generous helping of hot glue down in the base here, which is probably why I couldn't move the mirror afterwards. And then I just glued everything back down. And then for the beaded uh, kind of necklace, we'll call it, I just worked my way around with some hot glue. And this is what it looks like as well. I love this mirror. This is kind of the silver version. The one from Pier 1 is gold. But again, I think it's a perfect complement. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay safe. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.